So today we are talking about five common scams that you might see if you are selling on Facebook Marketplace. And also uh, works with OfferUp too. So any, or Craigslist, any of these local apps is what we're talking about today. So. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to dive into them, give you five to be on the lookout. These are not the only ones that you might come across, but these are definitely are the most common, the ones that we have dealt with the most in, throughout our reselling career. And we actually, we're doing this challenge right now. So this came up a lot. We're talking about selling more on Facebook Marketplace and offer up locally. So this was one of the biggest questions was, well, what about scams? Because I'm listing my items and these people are messaging me. How do I know if it's legit or if it's a scam? Yep. So we just want to dive into those. Be on the lookout. So scam. Number one, <laughs> they want a lot of personal information. So right up front, they want your, you know, email, phone number, all this stuff, like right in the beginning. And you don't want to give them all your personal information. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. exactly. So if somebody's reaching out and doing that, typically any of these marketplaces, they are going to set up a meeting point with you to where you can meet up with them. You can message them through messenger or however Craigslist has a safe way of doing it. OfferUp has a safe messenger way that you can stay on platform. If they get outside of that and start asking you for, for other stuff, phone numbers, addresses, and all that kind of stuff. It might be a scam. Just be careful with that. Be on the lookout for people trying to get too much information from you. Yeah, there was, I listed la this week, I have a sewing table and I listed it on Marketplace and somebody messaged me right away and said, I I want that. That's not, I want this item. I can come pick it up right now. And then th they wanted my, I think my phone number right away. They wanted something to take me off platform. I said, no, all communication can go through the app. So that was like the second thing they said to me. And I was like, no, all communication can go through the app. And then crickets. Yeah. So uh, if you have a long dialogue back and forth, you do like to talk to people I on do. the phone. So there is times where it, it, but in the beginning, right off the bat, usually you have some dialogue going back and forth before you do give a phone number. But typically <laughs> if somebody does want to connect with you with a phone number, they're going to reach out and give you their phone number. They're not going to ask for your, True. if it's legit. Now I typically don't give out my phone number. True unless somebody has reached out and said, hey, this is my phone number. You can contact me to set up the arrangements, the pickup arrangements and all that kind of stuff. So if somebody is reaching out to you and giving their, you their phone number for a text or call, that's definitely, it's probably not a scam. But when they're asking for your phone number before they give their phone number, typically that is not a good sign. So yeah, get away from that. <laughs> yeah, just stay on platform as long as you can. And then if you do, like we do sell a lot of larger items, so there might be a little higher dollar items and they might want to talk on the phone with you. And that's, you know, that's fine. And you yep. can kind of judge each, each individual transaction. Action yep. or, or message. So the second one is they want your email and the reason why, and this goes with personal information, but they want to get your email. And the reason being is one reason, there's a couple of reasons, but yep. one of them is because then they can email you a confirmation of payment in air quotes, if you're listening to this on the podcast, which is just basically a Photoshop of a payment and it's yep. not really in your account. So this yep. happened to you. I just yeah. had this happen last week, put on, what was this for? You, you had one with the glove, remember? He wanted I you. I did, but that was, he actually went he, to extremes on that one. But the person before that wanted, was it the bike, the exercise bike? I don't remember. That we got out of the trash? I think it was. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. They wanted my email address so they could pay me through Zelle. And then they were going to have a sister, brother, somebody else pick it up. <laughs> I mean, typically when you start going through stuff like that, yeah, not a good sign. But I had known because prior to this about a year ago we tried to sell a baseball glove on offer up and the guy got on the phone he with actually me. talked to you that's the first I've time you never had somebody <laughs> scam me and get on to a phone try call to with scam me you. or try <laughs> to scam me and get on a phone call with me i've had them tell me hey i can't talk on the phone i'm on a ship off of africa and i don't have <laughs> cell service right and i can only type i've had that happen before but this guy got on the phone with me got my email address and then sent me a pdf or a picture that he sent payment and the payment was coming my way and then i had to buy yeah well that's another scam but he wanted me to buy gift cards to release the payments into my i think that was venmo or either venmo or zelle but a whole bunch of hoops you had to jump through to get it so typically if they want your email address they're trying to send you photos or they're trying to send you fake stuff through your email and he or, sent you the screenshots and it showed the amount of money i think it was 300 dollars for that glove is what you were selling it yeah. for and he showed that amount of money was sent but it, you look in your account, you log in and it's not physically there. So it's like, until I see it in my account, sorry, not, you know, but it's, you can see how people would believe yeah. it. And people it's, are going to extreme yeah. 
uh, links to scam people. So just be careful. If somebody does want your email address and they're trying to pay you through that, if you do give them your email address, if you do uh, accept Zelle, uh, Vimo and all those, it's not uncommon to do that stuff, yeah. but make sure you have your phone open, your app open, and you see the money come in and it'll tell you who it's from and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you can verify that before you release whatever you're selling to somebody else. Yeah. So yeah, we, we don't like to do online payments, but we, we, we do know that it is more common in practice now yeah. we prefer cash but we have stood in front of somebody they paid us with paypal or venmo or zelle and we just have our phones there open money's there yep. we're good to go you can't take the item till i see the money in my account yep. and so. then typically when somebody pays you with that and not typically always <laughs> once the money comes over they can't get it back yeah. um, so as long as it's showing make sure it's not pending in your account yes. or your pending balance is that make sure it is actually into your account um, before you actually release whatever it is that you're selling and so. one thing i don't know if that guy that sent you the email was from his like he was saying here's a screenshot of the payment or if he was trying to send it from paypal because that's one another scam that's very common i get this from facebook all the time like it looks like official facebook like you're doing something wrong your ads are banned or whatever or paypal your something with your account is messed up and and then you go and you click on the actual email address that's sending it to you and it's some user dot 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 blah, blah, like a whole bunch of letters and numbers and it's not even anything real so yeah. so you can always check that too if you're getting like you have money from paypal or whatever it is, check and the check, sending the, address. check the sending address and make sure. Yeah. It's and a lot of people put like PayPal one two three four seven two one, and they'll put some long thing as their email address, but true. it is not from PayPal. So that's Check your account is the best thing to do. <laughs> absolutely, account, and you can see where the the email is actually coming yeah. from. So. But the number three, which you already touched on, was the gift card. So that is another big one. Is that's a big red flag right there. Don't ever go buy gift cards because they're not sending you legit money. They're just trying to get money from the gift cards. So yep. so be be careful. Be be very question it. Be very, what's the right word? Careful. Yeah. I just, if somebody's <laughs> asking you to get gift cards for whatever reason, do no. not do it. It has nothing no. to do with buying and selling something. You should not have to go buy a gift card to release funds into your account. You should not have to give a gift card to anybody else. Some people will tell you, hey, go get me $200 in gift cards and I'm going to give you $1,000 yeah. for this item, but I need $200. And, and just know it's a scam. Anytime they're trying to get you to buy gift cards when you're trying to sell something to them, it has, stay away from it. It's a scam. So yeah. we've had that happen a lot. That is something that a lot of people even tell us, hey, I got to go buy gift cards for something to, re no, to release funds. Just don't do it. Stay away from it. Yeah. And then number four, which you just touched on was over wanting to overpay for an item. So almost anytime... And this also is kind of, I guess, a bonus one is usually it happens right when you first list something. So it's you first list something and one of the first people to message you, you know, sometimes you do have a hot item and people message you right away, but typically the scammers find it fast for some reason. And there's like, you have an item listed for $200. I'm going to give you $500 or even, you know, $250. Any something extra for the item, it's usually a big red flag yeah. and don't go through with it. So nope. they're going to say, please hold the item. I'll <laughs> yes. send you $500 and I will have somebody come and pick it up once the check clears and I'll have a moving company come and pick it up. Yeah. Stay away from it. That's a, it's a joke. Most people, you know, I know if I want something, I'm not paying more than it. Typically I'm offering people less <laughs> Money, um, than that. what they're asking exactly not going out and saying hey i'm going to send you double the price of it just hold on to it and i will send a moving company once a cl check clears or once the funds are available typically once they get to that they're going to want your bank routing number they're going to want a lot of stuff so they can wire you the money or they can send you your cashier's check they're going to want your address your phone number and all that kind of stuff so it's a scam stay away from it anytime somebody's trying to pay you more money to hold it even to ship it they might tell you hey i'm going to give you an extra 200 to ship it shouldn't cost you but 20 dollars, but keep the extra money for your convenience that's a scam no. stay away from it anytime no. somebody's doing that kind of stuff so yeah. the only time i think you that would ever be is if you had a super hot item and a lot of people and you told said look i have a lot of interest in this i can't you know and they might be like well i'll pay you 20 bucks extra i really want this item like I, that could be the only time that it could be legit because somebody really wants an item but it has to be a really hot item yeah. so but they are going to say they're going to pay you and then they're going to yeah. meet up with you and right pay away you. yeah they're not going to say hey Offer, i'm going to yeah. send it to you i need your address i need your phone number i need all this kind of stuff so I can wire it so I can do all that anytime they get into that no but you most is right if they do say hey I'll give you an extra twenty dollars if I can do it because they know they're getting a good deal that's it okay great you're giving me the most when can you meet up let's meet up and take care of it and then they'll give you the extra twenty dollars so when you're doing that and they're gonna meet up with you in front of you and either pay you through the app or give you cash you know that's legit but when they're doing all that other stuff <laughs> stay no. away from it uh, that was my number five is my cousin's uncle's brother had an emergency so somebody else my sister 
dealer is going to come pick up the item from you and I'm going to pay you this way. And so they, I guess they all come back to paying you yeah. through a different way because they're trying to get the item for free and, or get gift cards yep. and whatnot. So that basically if they're trying to arrange somebody else to get it, that's is a red flag. Not always it's the, you know, but yeah. that doesn't mean it's necessarily a scam, but usually people yeah. will meet you. No, unless they're saying like my husband or my wife are going to meet you, but else. usually it's an uncle yeah. or somebody. Well, when you a just, family emergency. just know, and this kind of goes into some more points that Melissa has, but just know it when it doesn't feel right. Like I've had some guy say he was deaf and he's got to use his computer to oh, communicate yeah, and he's on a ship in the middle of the Atlantic <laughs> and he's an oil rig, you know, and just crazy, crazy stories. When you come up with crazy stories. Typically, it's a scam. Stay away from it. It's, it, yeah, it, you you want to run from it. So some other points that you, like Melissa, I think she wrote down, uh, use your heart. You, yep, you Trust your gut. That's it. <laughs> trust your gut. You, if you, if it doesn't feel right, get somebody else's opinion. You give somebody the benefit of that out, but get somebody else's opinion and say, hey, does this sound right or does this sound like a scam? And if somebody else says it sounds like a scam, most likely it's a scam. Get away from it. Don't, yeah. don't mess with it. Yeah. And scams can be like, at first they can worry you because you don't want to get scammed. But once you see them and you can recognize them, it really only takes like two or three messages back and forth and you can, and, and then you you're done it. and you're done and you know it. So it's not like, we're not nervous about losing money on scams because we can recognize them. Yeah. So it's just kind of seeing them. If anything, it's just more annoying because you have to go through, but it's not even, I mean, it's not a lot. It's not like it's a couple messages back and forth. Yes. It's annoying, but it's yeah. probably more annoying than any, than that you could actually lose money. So for um, example, the the person with the bike who wanted to pay me was Zell and they wanted my email address. Zell you can do from a phone and use a phone number. You don't need an email address. You can use an email address, but typically Zell is connected with your bank and your phone number, not an email she address. Your email. And she wanted my email address so she could send me confirmation. When that happened, I told her no, I'm not doing Zell. You can bring me cash and right there communication stopped and it was like, okay, well I can't scam this guy. I'm not wasting any more time. Just know that's the case. And you if if at all in doubt, cash is king. Make them bring cash. If you're worried about the app, don't download a special app on yeah, uh, Zelle or a Venmo. If you don't have that, tell them, Hey, I can't do that. All I can do is cash. That's what the normal expectation is. If I give you an item, I want to get cash back at the same exact time. It's not the end of the world. Most people can easily run to an ATM, grab some cash, pick it up before they meet you. So definitely do that. And if you're meeting people in public places, some people would think that you're meeting them, you know, they give you an address and you get there and it's in the middle of nowhere and they're going to rob you or something like that. If you tell them, hey, I'm going to meet you at my local police station, most people are not going to be that hesitant to bring cash to a police station or a fire department or a strip mall right. that you know a lot of people around. They're not going to be that hesitant. That would be the biggest red flag if somebody wanted to meet you and they give you an address out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you map it in, it's like, whoa, this is Tim Buck two. No. Okay, this is crazy. They're gonna rob me. They're gonna, I'm gonna take two hundred dollars and they're gonna rob me. That's the kind of stuff. But when you're telling them to meet at a public place yeah. where there's a lot of people around, police officer, fire, a fire department, something like that, you know that that's that's not a scam. And yeah. nobody should worry about bringing cash to a deal like that either. Yeah. And we talked about safety just on an episode right yeah. before this, not that long ago. So definitely check that out if you're you know wanting to make sure that you're safe when you're doing these transactions. But yeah, I I feel like. Is that once you're aware of it, it's really hard to get tricked. I will say that offer up phone call was one of the like you've never you talked never to somebody, before. and that so that was interesting. So that was a new one for us. But for the most part, they're easy to spot once you learn them. Yeah, they're a little different on eBay, and we'll dive into eBay another time. Yeah. These are more just for the local, any of the local apps, marketplace, Craigslist, offer up. So and on eBay, they tend to disappear once you build your feedback. Yeah, on marketplace, not so much. It's kind of you get them more when you first list an item, and then they kind of go away. So I will say back to the one about the baseball glove, the guy who said he paid me, sent me an email stating that the money was in my account and all that kind of stuff. He got on the phone and got very belligerent with me and oh, yeah. was very upset saying, Hey, I paid you. I need my item. You can clearly see. And he was talking to me, telling me this stuff yeah. and he was foreign, but he was telling me, Hey, I, I don't have the money anymore. I can't get it back. You're going to have to send me this item. And That's I said, true. listen, That's interesting. it is not in my account until you get it into my account. I don't want to have anything to do with you. And I ended up blocking the guy's phone number because I didn't want to mess with him. I knew he was a scammer after that. There's no possible way that he could send me a transaction and wouldn't even show up as pending or anything like that in my account. And I had no recollection in the counter, no visible thing showing that he was trying to send me money other than him emailing me with fake email confirmation. So just know that going into it. If but, the funds yeah. are not in your account there, you can have people that will go to extreme links to scam you. But at the end of the day, if the item is exchanged for the money or you do not give the item up until you 
you have the money in your account, then you should be perfectly fine. But most of them won't get on the phone, but no. they, you never know. In my 20 some years, never I've know. never had a scammer get on the phone and physically but talk to me. But ones that do like the IRS ones that call you. And then they say that I had that one. Remember that one? I was driving home from work and the the guy's like, there's going to be a police officer at your house yeah. if you don't pay us. This, and I was so nervous. And so I can see how they they can get they you. can get in your mind. And like, I was on the phone with this guy and I finally I got home and then I think you took the phone. And then I was like, after like taking a step back and realizing like, this is just a scammer. Like, what the heck? These people like- Trying to get immediate money. If they would put as much effort into actually doing something yeah. meaningful that could make money, I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, who does that? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was so maddening. <laughs> Anyways, so that had nothing to do with the Facebook marketplace. That was just a random yeah. random phone call, but still, it was annoying. People so. will go to extreme lengths. So just be careful. And yeah. like Melissa said, use your gut. Ask a friend. Ask somebody if it sounds legit. Post um, on Facebook. There's a lot of Facebook absolutely. groups. That you can always you know add a comment to one of our posts. We're all over social media. Yep. And somebody will answer you. We'll answer you. But there's a lot of great groups out there, too, to get. If you're just not sure, like you just want an extra set of eyes, Sometimes it just takes an extra set of eyes and it's easy to be like, okay, yeah, that's definitely a scam. So yep. anyways, so. <laughs> awesome. You guys rock, guys. If you have not done yet and you enjoy the show, please take a second, rate and review this podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Mean the world to us to help other people in their- Reselling journey. That's it, in their, their business to go to the next level. So if you have not done yet and you do enjoy the podcast, please share it, rate and review it. We'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys. Guys, go check out this next video.